What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Teen Life Group for today. Uh, we are going to continue our uh, study in the uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 18, and uh, our series is entitled Don't Be a Fool, and uh, the title of our uh, lesson for today from verse number nine is The Lazy Destroyer, okay? And so we're going to find out what the Lazy Destroyer is all about, and uh, we're just going to jump on uh, right in, and let's see... Uh, of what this is talking about. So let's go ahead and uh, turn or click to uh, Proverbs 18.9. Uh, let's look at our verse. He also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. He also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. And this uh, this particular proverb is a little bit uh, different than some of the other ones we've looked at. Some of the other ones have contrasted uh, different people, or they have made just successive statements about a certain uh, individual, a foolish person, a wicked person. And uh, this one, it doesn't really do that. It just kind of states kind of one thing about this lazy person. He who is slack in his work is brother to him to who destroys. And so this is really not, uh, this is not really getting us to look outward, to look out for different people. This proverb is, in my mind, is meant for us to kind of look inward and to evaluate our own selves, that we not be this type of person. Uh, let's kind of go through our verse here. We'll uncover the meaning, and we'll go through, I think, three different words today, and then we'll apply it here at the end. So let's look at uh, our first uh, phrase. Number one is, he also who is slack in his work. Okay, so we want to talk about, first of all, that last word, Work. We're going to talk about the word slack in just a minute, but the word work, uh, this is uh, this Hebrew word is really used the same way that we use the English word work. So you can go to work, you can be about your work, you can, um, it's just, it kind of, it talks about different areas of things that you do or uh, things that you have going on that you need to take care of. And it's talking about your occupation or a person's business. And that's not just uh, uh, a person's, like, their business, like, this is my, my business, my company. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the business that you are involved in in your life, okay? And uh, so someone's job, your occupation, the business of a person, the things they're doing, or, or their duties, okay? Things that they are responsible to take care of. And sometimes those things overlap, and sometimes they are separate. I have duties that are not part of my occupation, okay? But I do have duties that are part of my occupation. And my business as a, as a person, Pastor Chad's business, some of those things have to do with my occupation. Some of those things don't have to do with my occupation or my duties. And uh, so really, these are just things that you are involved in. And this word for work, you know, the funny thing about work is I didn't really realize this until, uh, or haven't really thought about it uh, a whole lot until I read something about it studying for this is that work is kind of a, a double-sided coin, right? On one side, work is, is tough, right? <laughs> work is hard. Work is laborious and toilsome. And sometimes you are involved in work that doesn't produce a lot. It's just, and it can be frustrating. And it can be, it, it's part of the curse, okay? Uh, some of the work that we are involved in is part of our curse, all right, from the fall of man. But on the other side of the coin, Work is very beneficial. Work is very satisfying. Completing work is very satisfying. And a work is also something that happened before the fall. Okay, so the Lord had Adam to, to tend the garden. He had work to do with naming the animals. I mean, he had responsibilities that were part of who he was and things that he was supposed to do before, the, before he fell and before the curse. Now, once he fell and sinned, Part of the curse was, hey, your work is going to be hard. And uh, so it's kind of a, 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 a double-edged uh, sword there, if you will, a double-sided coin. Uh, it's beneficial, but it's toilsome, and it's it's tough. This word for work is really talking about the benefits of work, okay? Not the toilsome side of work. The benefits, uh, the satisfaction that comes from it, okay? And uh, this word, it comes from a root word, that means to commission as a deputy. Okay, so kind of like uh, if a, it's, it's almost, okay, the word commissioned, 
let's talk about that first. To commission someone to do something is to give them a, a task to do, to, uh, to charge them with a responsibility, and to give them the authority to carry that out to uh, commission somebody, okay? So uh, this is going to help us when we look at this next word, that deputy. What is a deputy? A deputy is someone who has, as a superior, someone who uh, they act um, kind of in uh, behalf of someone, kind of like an ambassador would to a, to a foreign country, all right? A deputy carries out responsibilities, and they carry out commissions from their superior and they carry those out in the authority of their superiors. Okay, so let's think about a sheriff and a deputy. Okay, when usually when we use the word deputy, we use it in terms of law enforcement. Uh, so let's just kind of stick with that, since that's kind of where our minds are familiar. A, a sheriff, he is charged, in, in the way we work here in North Carolina and most states, is that each county has a sheriff, one sheriff, and that sheriff is responsible for uh, keeping the peace. Uh, upholding the law, enforcing the law, those types of things. That is the sheriff's responsibility. And you guys know the sheriff has deputies up under him, deputy sheriffs. They ride around all the time. You see them a lot. You really don't see the sheriff riding around and patrolling a whole lot. Okay, He has deputies that do that. They are acting based on what the sheriff wants them to do, and they're doing that in the authority of the sheriff. So when a deputy pulls you over for speeding and he writes you a ticket, he is doing that based on the authority of the sheriff of that county. Okay, And uh, so that's kind of what this word work means. Okay, it is, uh, So you think about your duty. Okay, Think about how, what are different ways that you are commissioned to do things, where people task you with things. Think about your parents for a minute, okay, teenagers. Um, what are things that they want you to do, things they want you to carry out and handle? Uh, you guys that have jobs, your bosses, okay, they commission you, they tell you, they give you things to do, and you're supposed to carry those things out. So uh, that's kind of what this word work is, okay? Um, so just before we move forward, just kind of think through, what is your business? What are your responsibilities? And those those vary from teenager to teenager, person to person. My, my daughter, Kara, she has responsibilities in our house, Okay. Uh, how well she carries those out are kind of up to her sometimes, right? <laughs> we have to help her with that. And Caleb, he's young, but I, I expect things from him as a five-year-old. Okay. And uh, what are what are you, what's your business? What are your duties? Uh, what what's your work? Um, now we need to know that when we kind of come into this the second word here, which is slack. Okay. Uh, he who is uh, also who is slack in his works. The word slack is a word that means to sink down, to relax, to let something let something down. And uh, really, what it's used in this context here in this verse, it's really giving us the idea of someone who shows himself or shows herself to be a lazy person. So you show yourself to be lazy, negligent, or idle. Uh, this is a picture of uh, a part of my backyard, and uh, when I bought our house, there was a pool there, and it sat right where that hole in the fence is, and that pool has since been taken down, and now there was a hole in our chain link fence where the pool used to be, and so Ms. Lauren and I decided to uh, kind of close that in, and so as you can see in the next picture, we put a fence up just recently. And uh, I'd never put chain link fence up before. And one of the things, I saw watching the videos and just, you know, figured out how to do it. And it was just a small section. And as we started putting that up, uh, we realized pretty quickly that we were going to have to put a lot of tension on that fence and pull it so that it was nice and tight. Okay. Uh, we started pulling up. We put our post in and we stand this chain link fence up. And the first thing that it wants to do is slack and fall back down. All right, it's just kind of just kind of hanging there, and so we had some fence ties that we kind of put just a few on there to kind of hold it up. What if we would have stopped right there? We would have said, "Hey, well, this fence, it's it's up there," and we just left it like that. Would that fence accomplish anything? No, it's a slack fence. One reason we put that there was to keep our dog in our yard. All right, our dog uh, Casey, she could have gotten out from that fence. It wasn't pulled tight. It was slack. It was just a lazy fence, 
Okay. And so now you obviously you can see from the picture we didn't do that. We took the slack out of that and we got some uh, some little ratchet straps and we were able to pull that fence really tight and then bolt it down so that it would it would it would it would be a strong fence. It's not a slack lazy fence. And this is kind of the idea here is that you don't need to be a lazy person. You don't need to be slack. All right? So if you were a chain link fence, how would you be as far as your responsibilities? My fence has a responsibility to keep our dog in our yard and to stay standing up, right? If, how do you do? Are you a strong fence or are you a lazy fence? Are you a drooping fence? Do you not carry out your responsibilities in the proper way, okay? That's what this is saying. He who is slack in his work, he who is lazy, okay? Uh, let's go to this next phrase. This type of person who's lazy, it says that he is brother to him who destroys. So this word destroys, it means to destroy. It means to ruin. It means to corrupt. It means to decay. And uh, really, you know, there's this word uh, for destroy. There's actually two Hebrew words that are there. And most translations just use the word destroy to, to put it there. But it's really... Um, uh, the word Baal is there. You may know the word Baal from the Old Testament foreign uh, false gods. But the word Baal means master or lord. And, uh, you know, so the, the whole, the full expression is that he is brother to someone who is the master of destruction. Okay. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more intensified than just destroyer. This is, it's kind of a bigger type of deal. There's a place in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 24, where it says a man of destruction, but it uses the word man-ish. Here, it's master, bale of destruction. So he who is slack in his work is brother to him who is a master of destruction. And so this is, you know, there's there's some emphasis here with this word destruction. Let me show you um, a couple Bible passages. This word has some dev devastating implications. So I'm going to take you to three Bible passages. We're just going to read them, but I want you to keep this word destruction in your mind, okay? So if you're lazy, you are a brother to the destroyer, okay, <laughs> to a destroyer. Let's go to Genesis chapter number six. Genesis 6, 11, uh, I'll put it up here for you so you don't have to turn there. Genesis 6, 11 says, now the earth was corrupt. And we're talking about, uh, this is in the days of Noah. Okay, so the world is about to be destroyed by a flood. Now the earth was corrupt, and that's our word, in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. So this is that word destroyed, okay? Uh, the word, the earth was corrupted. It was, it was ruined. It was ruined to the point that God is going to destroy it and start over, okay? Uh, let's go to uh, Genesis 18. Uh, Genesis 18 and 19 are two chapters that you're familiar with. This is where Abraham is speaking to the Lord in relation to Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot, his nephew, was there, and he ar he argues back and forth with God, trying to cut a deal about uh, if there's 50 people there that are righteous, don't destroy it. If there's 10, if there's five, and he, you guys are probably familiar with that. In chapter 19, verse 13, this is where the angels that the Lord sent to destroy it, they uh, they come to rescue Lot and his family. So this is what those angels say to Lot. For we are about to destroy this place because their outcry has become so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And so it's used twice there, okay? Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, was, they were, it was completely destroyed, those two cities. There were, it, was, it was laid flat, okay? And... Um, so pretty devastating results here that the Lord is going to accomplish uh, through these angels in destroying these cities, okay? If you are lazy, then you're like a destroyer, okay? So being lazy, the point is that it's a serious thing. Don't be lazy, okay? The last place I want to show you is Exodus chapter number 8. And um, there's a couple places where this word is used, actually. We're just going to look at one verse in verse 24. This is the plagues on Egypt. Okay, uh, this is speaking about the swarms of flies that uh, that come over Egypt. Look, look up on the screen. It says, um, 
Then the Lord did so, and there came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and the houses of his servants, and the land was laid waste because of the swarms of flies in all the land of Egypt. So if you're familiar with the plagues of Egypt, those plagues completely destroyed Egypt and just completely devastated the economy, the land. Here, uh, the translation says laid waste. That's the word to destroy that we've been looking at. So he who is slack in his work is brother to him who is a master of destruction. In the same way that Egypt was laid west, laid waste, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were destroyed. In the days of Noah, the earth was so corrupt and ruined. That's the type of person that you are like when you're lazy, okay? Um, so, real quick, okay, let's apply this. And this is really simple, okay? But this is extremely important for the way that you live your life, okay? And I hope you'll really take time to think about some of this. Number one is this. Laziness equals destruction. Okay, a lot of times we think, oh, you know, I, I just, I'm just going to put that off for a little bit. That type of mindset and procrastinating and being lazy and half-hearted in the way that we carry out our work, our business, our duties, this proverb likens that, that we are, we are like a destroyer. We are like someone who ruins things. Okay, um, look what it says. I didn't say too much about this, but he also who is slack in his work is brother to him. The word brother there, uh, you think about that relationship, okay? It's used here to signify something like, hey, you are just like a destroyer. You are similar to a destroyer. You're brother to a destroyer. And so you think about um, really the, these two types of people accomplish the same thing. Okay? Whether you are a lazy person or you're someone who demolishes things, this proverb says that you guys are exactly alike. So we don't need to be this type of person. Okay, uh, I'm going to give three quotes to you. Okay, I'm going to put them up here. And um, these are just some things that I read as I was studying and I thought they were really good and I wanted to put them up here. Uh, this first one is from uh, two guys. Uh, their last names are Kyle and Dalich. They are... Uh, Commentators, they're German commentators, and so this is an old quote. But look what it uh, look what they say. He who shows himself slack in his work produces in his own way as truly as the master of destruction who does it directly by his conduct. Okay, so what is that saying? A lazy person accomplishes the exact same thing as a destroyer. They accomplish the same. The destroyer does it directly by his conduct, and he smashes and demolishes things, we could just say. A lazy person brings about that same result because they don't take care of their business. They don't work hard. They don't take care of the things they're supposed to, their responsibilities. They just fall by the wayside. They do their work half-heartedly. The result down the road is the same thing. Uh, let me read another one to you. This is by a guy... Peter Stevenson, this is a little bit uh, more recent of a quote, but uh, he, he has a commentary on the book of Proverbs. He says, both of them, the lazy and the destroyer, have the same accomplishment, though of course the destroyer achieves his goal faster. The lazy man does not simply waste his opportunities, he destroys them, okay? So again, the end result is the same, okay? Okay. Um, I mean, just the natural law of the universe, okay? Those of you that are, that are far enough in science, you know about the, the, the laws of thermodynamics, right? I think the second law, what does it teach? What does it say? It says that basically uh, disorder is always increasing, right? So if you just leave things to themselves naturally, what do they do? They break down. They become more disorganized, okay? Things don't just organize themselves naturally, uh, which, by the way, is a direct, you know, contradiction to the theory of evolution, but that's a completely different <laughs> series of videos. Um, but things don't naturally organize and take care of themselves. They naturally disorganize. You guys know this? 
If you just leave things in your refrigerator and just leave them there, what naturally happens? It's a mess. <laughs> things get moldy and they eventually just break down. All right. If you just leave your car out in the driveway and just leave it there, what happens over time? It becomes a, some, it becomes a hunk of metal that you cannot do anything with. It won't it won't crank. It won't drive. It won't do anything. And sometimes you may ride down the road and see cars that just sat in the parking lots or in their drives for so long that they just don't do anything, right? And that's what happens. And so that's why a lazy person, someone who does not take care of things, who doesn't clean out their refrigerator, if you will, hey, they're accomplishing the same thing as a destroyer, all right? Um, and then the very last uh, comment, this is taken from the Bible Knowledge Commentary, real simple commentary, but I really like what they say. A poor or unfinished job differs little from a project that someone demolished. Both projects are valueless. Uh, at my house, our kids got a marble run, I think for Christmas is when they got it. You guys know what a marble run is, right? You got all the little, uh, little tunnels and little ramps and little like side windy places and little wheels that spin. You drop the marbles down and the marbles kind of go through everything and make the wheels spin. It's super cool, okay? So we got one of those for our kids, and you have to build this thing, all right? It's, I don't know how many some odd pieces it is, 100 pieces at least. And um, I think our kids, you know, they tried to put this thing together, and they were kind of super excited about it. And uh, now it, it kind of breaks down because they weren't being lazy, okay? They were younger, and it's a little tougher for them to do. But they basically had an unfinished, poorly assembled marble run, okay? And they tried to put their marble in, and it just don't. It doesn't go where it's supposed to go. It doesn't end up where it's supposed to go. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's just a valueless mess. <laughs> so I come home from work, and uh, they're super excited about putting this thing together. They've already tried and failed. And they got kind of a poor, unfinished job sitting in there in the, in the room. And so I come in, and we kind of just tear, tear it all down, and we build it the right way. Okay, so I take time, I look at the instructions, we build it right, we put the marbles in, it just, it works perfect. And they, and they love it, having a great time. But it's a little, it was sitting on some carpet and, and it kind of was a little, just the design, you know, it doesn't take much to touch it and something fall over. And that's what happened, right? One of us bumped it the wrong way with our elbow or something, our foot hit it or something, and it just fell. It was demolished. And so there it is laying on the floor, half of it's still standing. But guess what? It is a mess. It is a valueless marble run. So my kids who, bless their hearts, they poorly and in an unfinished way try to put this marble run together and it was useless. Once it was put together correctly but was demolished, what is it? It's the same thing. It's useless. So when you don't when you don't accomplish your work the right way, it's the same thing as just demolishing it. That's what this guy says here. A poor or unfinished job differs little from a project that is that someone demolished. Both projects are valueless. Okay. So uh, number one is that uh, laziness equals destruction. Okay. Uh, number two, and we're we're going to be done here in just a just a just a minute. Verse number uh, number point number two here. Sorry, I put a three up. Two. <laughs> Number two is work diligently. Okay. Uh, do your work with care and conscientiousness. All right. There's your word for today. Do you know what it means to be conscientious? All right. Um, let's talk about the word care first. This means that your work matters to you. You know what that means? You care about your work, whatever that is. Um, now, what does it mean to be conscientious of something? It means that you want your work right. You want it done correctly. You don't want it like half-heartedly done. You want it done right. So think about your homework, okay? Do you do your homework diligently? What about chores that you have? Do you do those chores diligently? Do you carry out your responsibilities diligently? Because listen, I'm going to tell you something. Your work your business, whatever it is, it reflects on you. And you need to learn this as teenagers, okay? Because uh, you got, you, my wife, Miss Lauren, she's a teacher. 
sometimes she'll bring papers home in a grade or something like that uh, from time to time, or I'd be up at this classroom and see her grading some stuff. And sometimes she would stop and say, honey, come look at this. And I come look at this kid's paper and it's just poorly done. And she's like, I get stuff from this kid all the time. What, what does that do? That work reflects on that student because she knows that the student is capable of more. And she sees the work that the student turns in and it just don't matter. What is it? it reflects poorly on that student, right? Listen, when you do poor work academically, uh, occupationally at your jobs or around the house with your chores, whatever it is, if you don't do those things diligently, it reflects very poorly on you and people notice, okay? If you're lazy, people are going to take notice of that. And hey, I'm going to tell you something right now. Laziness is something that I have to overcome, all right? I'm, you guys know, hey, Pastor Chat, I'm very laid back, all right? And in some some ways, that aspect of my personality is a, is a strength for me, okay? I uh, It takes a lot to get me frazzled. It takes a lot to get me angry. I'm very laid back, and I can handle situations, you know, pretty calmly. That's a, that's a positive trait, but then the negative side of that, the weakness of that, is that it tends toward laziness. And so I've got to stay on top of this myself. Um, and I see it creeping up in my life all the time. And I, you know, I try not to be this way, okay? But people notice it when you're not, right? Um, hey, my fence. Here's the picture of my fence again. You may look at this fence and say, man, you know what, Touch Chad? That looks a lot better than the hole you had there. Let me tell you something about this fence. As of uh, the recording of this video, this fence is not done. It may look done, and I could leave it just like it is, and it would accomplish its job. But it's not done yet, all right? There's some other little things that I need to do to this fence to make it extra secure. There's some tension I need to put on the bottom of this thing. My wife, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Things that I could skimp on, but things that I'm not planning on skimping on. Things that I've got to go and, and finish, Hey, what is that? That's diligent work, all right? Now, if I don't do it, it doesn't mean not being diligent and lazy, all right? So, but you need to be diligent. You need to work diligently, okay? Uh, do your work with care and conscientiousness, all right? Do it right and uh, make it matter to you, all right? Realize that your reputation is at stake every time you do something, okay? And then thirdly and lastly, three, is work hard, okay? These are really closely connected between working diligently and working hard, but this means to do your work with effort and endurance, okay? Uh, don't take lazy shortcuts. Uh, don't, um, look, hey, let me ask you this. How's your closet look? Has your parents ever asked you to clean your room? And where does the mess end up? <laughs> In the closet, right? What is that? That's a shortcut. That's being lazy. You didn't really clean the way you were expected to. You threw it in the closet, all right? What'd your closet look like, all right? You need to work hard. Don't be lazy and take shortcuts, all right? Um, now, there's a, you know, a fine line, hey, is being wise and doing something efficiently and wisely and not overworking yourself when it can be done easily another way. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you skimp on your work. Okay? And you're not doing it diligently. You're not working hard. You're taking lazy shortcuts. Guys, don't, don't, uh, don't carry out your business and perform your duties that way. Because again, what does that do? It reflects on you in a very poor way and people notice. All right? And then it also means work towards completion. Okay, Work hard. Are you someone that has a good work ethic? Can you get out there? and do whatever you need to do. When I was um, a teenager, we had a phrase we used to say to each other, you need to man up. And you may have heard that before. We used to say it to each other all the time. What does man up mean? It means you need to step up to the plate and do what needs to be done. Whether that's for a team and you're playing a game, hey man, we need you to man up and get this done. Or it's, hey, you got a responsibility you gotta do, you're in the middle of a work project. There's something tough that needs to be done. Someone say, hey man, you need to man up. You get that wheelbarrow up the hill, okay? That's working hard. That's working toward completing a job. And hey, that's not just for the boys, okay, girls? You girls need to woman up, okay? Step up and do what needs to be done. And hey, girls, let me just sidebar here. You, as you girls in the next few years, hey, as you start dating guys, you need to look for guys that are not lazy, okay? 
Because one day, hopefully, you're going to marry somebody, and that man, if he is lazy, and if he does not do his work and take care of the duties of your house, then who's going to do that? You or nobody? So girls, now again, I realize there's a big difference between an 18-year-old and a 28-year-old, okay? And so, you know, a man does mature as he gets older. But hey, you need to be looking for that. You need to be looking. Is this, is this teenage guy, is this young adult guy, whoever, whenever you start dating, is he lazy now? Because odds are he's going to continue to be lazy. Okay, so look for someone who works hard. So guys, you need to be someone who works hard, okay? So hey, let's let's work hard. Let's work diligently. Let's uh, not be lazy. And please, don't be a fool. I'll see you next time.